It's funny. I love it. People know me now, at least enough to say, well, women, I say no lines of demarcation. You ain't lying about that, baby. Make sure you ain't got no, say it with me. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. No lines of demarcation. Okay. Hey girl, what up? It's Minna. In this video, we are doing something different. I'm starting off with almost a full face because we're going to go through eyeshadow mistakes. Okay. I'm going to do one eye the correct way and then one eye the incorrect way. So if you are a beginner at makeup and or are very interested in seeing how the video goes, make sure you keep on watching. Make sure you also subscribe and also make sure you join my text community. So let's go into the video. Make sure you comment. Random giveaways are always in full effect and give the video a thumbs up. So I wanted to go through the brow highlight with you because it just all ties in together. Brow product that I use now a lot that I love is Charlotte Tilbury Brow Cheat. I've really been enjoying it and I love the fact that the insert is refillable. So NARS Soft Matte Concealer in the color Amand. When I do my brows, this pencil, this brush, excuse me, is from Evita Joseph, although I do have a dupe for it on my Amazon storefront. I'll link that below as well. I like to take the actual concealer right here, starting in the middle of the brow, not the front, not the back. And this is really my rule of thumb for the whole entire face. So I start there. I do cut off the tail end of my brow because I feel like it, okay? That's just what I do. It's my prerogative, it's my face, and that's how I do it because that's how I like it. I like to create a higher arch. Look at this sun going up and down. I mean, the clouds closing in and opening up. That's what I mean. <laughs> I just love that. So applying it here in the middle of my face, carving out the brow softly in the front, but more defined toward the end. And then I'm stopping right there. I'm isolating out the brow bone, all right? That's just this meaty part right here under the eyebrow, starting here in the middle again and carving this out. I'm doing this fast because I know my face. I've been doing this for 10 plus years, but of course, if you're a beginner, take your time. But once you know how you like your brows, you'll get faster. Uh-oh, this one's looking a little wild. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so annoyed. Hold on, I did too much on this side. Uh, okay, we're gonna fix that in a second. I'm gonna fix that in a second. See, I can't even stand that. Okay. Alrighty, now taking a fluffy brush and blending this out. You wanna make sure that there are no harsh lines. Again, this part does play a part in the eyeshadow process. That's why I'm showing this to you. So I'm pressing. No need to be wiping right now. I was getting off a stray piece of hair from the brush. So I'm pressing and as I'm pressing, I'm wiping. So press, wipe, okay? And that's how it's all going to be blended. Getting off this random stray it happens, whatever. And I'm cleaning off my brush. I always keep paper towels in front of me. I cut them into squares and I use them to clean my hands or my brushes. So I'm always wiping things off as needed. And now I'm just patting to make sure that there are no harsh lines. When you're at the stage where you're trying to blur any harsh lines, you don't want to have product on your brush because why? You're blurring, you're blending right now. You're not applying anything. And that's where the paper towel comes into play. So you can continue to clean your brush off and then blur those harsh lines. It's funny. I love it. People know me now at least enough to say, well, women, I say no lines of demarcation. You ain't lying about that, baby. Make sure you ain't got no, say it with me, open your mouth. Open your mouth. No lines of demarcation, okay? Now that I fix this brow, cause I was doing too much, look at it. It's too like, what is that? I don't know what she's doing, okay? I love this one. This is the color Natural Black. It's perfect. It doesn't make me have to use a different product. Now these brows do look a little crazy today. This one is, this one is not, <laughs> it's not doing what I need today. Why are you doing that? I'm a little rusty, hold on. All right, I'm not too pleased with this eyebrow, but we're just gonna move on because that is not the focus of this, the focus of the video anyway. I'm gonna set my brow, but oh, I have some powder here in my tissue. All right, this is Laura Mercier Translucent Powder in the color Honey.
In order to ensure that I do not get confused, I'm gonna do one whole eye the correct way and then one whole eye the wrong way because I'll end up doing it both the right way on accident. Let me put on a lip. That'll make this like look kind of look like it's almost done. Put a lip on. What lip should I put on? I'm always wearing the same lip. Maybe we should do both. It'll mess up. It'll throw off the, the eye that I do. Let's just do the eye first. Excuse me. Okay, let's focus. Let's do the eye first. Otherwise, it'll throw off what I'm gonna do. Now, on the correct eye, I'm gonna use the NYX Cosmetics eyeshadow base and this is the white one. One. I always like to use an eyeshadow primer, but I cannot lie to you. Oh, I could have used my fingers. I'm so used to using a brush because I usually have long nails on, but I don't have long nails on today. I could use my finger, but I forgot. I like to use an eyeshadow primer because it helps to prevent creasing. It helps to basically dry out the eyelid to ensure that the eyeshadow is going onto a dry space. You could of course use translucent powder to achieve that, but I'm just used to using an eyeshadow base. I use an eyeshadow base ever since I used to Started doing makeup and I used to buy MAC makeup. I love using Painterly Paint Pot, which I still have. I just gave her a little bit of a break, but I'm about to dig her back up again. All right, I'm blending this out with my finger, blending out the harsh edges, wiping my hand to make sure that I'm not adding any more product, but more so blending the product out. I also cleaned my brush a bit and then I'm gonna do the same thing. This is just to blend all this down, okay? All right, now this doesn't have to be like so white in terms of the eyeshadow base. It just needs to be there, okay? Raising my forehead so that I am not going to get the creasing right here that is gonna happen naturally. Keep your eyebrows raised so that that does not crease. Now, as far as the eyeshadow palette is concerned, I'm gonna use this new one that I got in PR from Sigma Beauty. This is the Dream Palette, Sigma Beauty and Beauty Bird. Lots of nice colors in here. I don't even know what eyeshadow look we're gonna do. Likely something natural, but I don't know. Let's see what happens, okay? Now, I'm gonna start off with a crease color. Let me get this brush out, whatever, it's fine. I'm beginning with a crease color. I like to always put a color in my crease, but more so in the transition. I'll explain that in a second. Okay, so this is my transition color, excuse me. I'm gonna use Tacos and Chill because it is more of a reddish brown. For my skin tone, I love to begin with the reddish brown, putting it right here. And the way that I identify where the transition color will go is by taking the back of my brush and pushing it right in between where your eyeball and your brow bone is. That is where your crease is, okay? So this is the area that you should put your transition color into. And depending on your skin tone, that's that's how you'll tell, but if you're brown like me, a reddish brown will be great. If you're way lighter than me, maybe tan or tan deep, then you can do like a brownish orange. Like it depends. I used to really have fun when I was a makeup artist. It really just depends on your skin tone and your undertones because I prefer a warm color in my trans in my crease at all times. It just is a must. So taking some of this, tapping off the excess, and then putting it into to my crease, okay? Now, because of the way that I want this to go onto my face, I want it to go in a very spread out manner. I'm using a fluffy brush. This one's from BoxyCharm. Any fluffy brush will do, but I want it to go in a very fanned out manner. I do not want this to be stuck in one area, which is what I will do on this side. I'm gonna show you all the things not to do, okay? All right, then we're gonna tighten up the crease color. And by tightening it up, we're gonna really focus that color into the crease. And normally what I do here is I will use a brown color. I'm gonna do brown with a frost. Let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. I'm gonna make this like a brown frosty everyday kind of a look, but a little turned up. You'll see what I mean, okay? All right, so now in the same palette, I'm using the color Woof Woof, <laughs> Woof Woof, okay? Taking some of the product on this old MAC 217 brush, dusting off the excess so that you're not dropping any product onto your face, and then sticking on the outer part of this crease that we identified already, right? Focusing on the outer part and starting with a small section first and then I'm taking some more and then bringing this up more. This way I can control the area in which I'm applying this product. I may want it to just stick right here. 
right? I want to give myself that option by doing it in a more controlled fashion. So what windshield wiper motions, but even still in small sections to really make sure that this is blended out. Now I like for my crease color to touch the front of my eyeshadow. I learned this years ago from Renny Vasquez and I just love it. I do not like for there to be a space between my crease and the front of my eyebrow. It just makes a huge difference. It really does tie into the contour. It's just beautiful. Okay. So there's that. Now I'm sure you're like, wait a minute, where is your crease color? It disappeared, but that's okay. Take a little bit more of tacos and chill, which is the reddish brown. And I'm going on top right here. Now you might be thinking, well then why not just wait and do that afterward? Girl, it makes a difference. I don't know. It makes a difference. So I always start off with my transition color. That's just how I do it. Okay. We're going to keep this real simple. All right. There's that. And then we're going to do our lid color. I almost said crease. Our lid color. So the lid is yo eyelid. Okay. Now, because I'm going to use a shimmer, I am going to use my fingers because you're going to get the best pigmentation when you do that. When I have long nails, I cannot do that. So I'm going to take advantage right now. And why don't we just use cafecito? Taking the ring finger. Oh, this is gorgeous. And right here. Okay. And I'm tapping it on first. Start closest to your eye. And let me tell you something else too. You see how there's a fold in my eyelid right there, right? You might think that that alone is your lid. That is not, okay? Your lid, when you look down, is again, isolated when you take the back of your brush and you press into your, your the area between your eyeball and your brow bone, your lid goes all the way up there. So when you're applying your lid color, which is the color that goes onto your eyelid, make sure you take it all the way up there. It is gonna feel so strange, but it's gonna open up your eye so much. And when I show you what not to do on the other side, you're gonna see exactly what I'm talking about, okay? So here I am pressing everything in and as I get toward the end where I have that dark brown, I'm stopping and just letting what's left over on my finger blend into everything. No need to bring this all the way over there at all. Just stay right here. And I'm taking some more and pressing it. It's basically giving me a soft cut crease, if you will. Okay. I used to do this kind of a look all the time. Like this is the basic starter kit of any beginner in makeup. This is, this is the look right here. This is definitely the look right here. Okay. And to keep this all the way simple for y'all, I'm going to just do eyeliner and mascara. I know. Ever. So this is gonna be real different for the kid, okay? Hold on. Do I even do top eyeliner? <laughs> I feel like I should, hold on. Let me see something. Now I'm gonna highlight my inner eye using Milagro. Milagro, what color is this? I hope this looks, okay, yeah. So highlighting the inner part of my eye with Milagro, see how I took a gold, but a yellow gold, not a bronzy orange type gold. So you wanna make sure you contrast it that way. And then I'm putting it right here in the inner eye. So gorge, so cute to open up the eyes and make the eyes pop, okay? And then, I would normally do eyelashes, baby. I don't know, what we doing? Oh my God. The bottom lash, I'm gonna use Lawless Cosmetics in this mascara. Hold on, I am mirror up, hello. <laughs> Cause for mascara, you need to be looking up. You feel what I'm saying? Cause I'm still thinking about what to do for the bottom. So be looking up, definitely. This does something so spectacular to the lashes. I just can't explain it. I really, really can't. This is definitely right now my favorite mascara. You know what? I'm gonna do something different today and just do mascara. Let me use a lawless one on the top. No eyeliner either. I know some of y'all just do it like this. You don't put eyeliner on it. You know what I'm saying? You could. And I can still do it. Right now, I'm just not going to. I'm doing something a little different today. Listen, I am challenging myself and it feels very strange. <laughs> it feels extremely strange. Look at these lashes. Oh my goodness. Look at these lashes. Wowzers! That looks good, baby. It looks all the way good. Ooh! Mm, 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 
because you know in my <laughs> Sephora everyday makeup video some of you were like I would put on eyeliner I would have put on eyeliner and it's true eyeliner does make a difference I just don't want to put eyeliner on top although I could okay we are moving on now to the eye look that is all the way wrong <laughs> so let's do that okay and I'm so impressed with myself I did the lid color and I didn't even blend the crease although I could have let's say you did this and it was a little crazy right here take the brush that has the color left over from the crease color which is the brown and then just go over this area lightly to blend it the problem with that though can come when you blend it too much you'll end up inadvertently closing off your lid which is opposite of what we wanted to do which was opening up the lid to make your eye look bigger right comment let me know already if this is helpful to you like let me know if you do these things are you doing this the correct way or are you like okay she about to come and start doing it how i be doing it <laughs> comment let me know where you fall okay in all of this i need to know now there are a few ways that i can go about the side where it is all wrong and i'm trying to debate how far i want to go with making this all wrong i want to do it the most realistic way that i think many of you are doing your eyeshadow okay so let's pretend like you've been following along and uh, let me put on a lip because this is just like being strange right now i'm gonna do nyx cosmetics butter gloss in the color lava cake let's do that a little intermission And those are colors, macchiato. Nice and juicy. This is cute. This is real wet. I need to <laughs> dabble off the inside. Hold on. All right. Okay. Yes. So here we are with the other side. Okay. Same eyeshadow palette. Let me show you what you might end up doing. Here's a crease brush that is not big enough. Right. And let's pretend like you've been following me for a while. You've heard me discuss the transition color and you want to put on a transition color. Okay. Let's use the same colors. Tacos and chill. Right. First of all, you ain't even using eyeshadow base. That's the problem. Number one. Okay. You going straight in with tacos and chill. Your eyeshadow still going to show. You see what I'm saying? But that just ain't what I advise. Unless you see me do my everyday makeup look and I don't put on an eyeshadow base. Yes, that's true because I'm like rushing to do it. But like, were you really trying to stunt and stuff? No. Okay, so, ooh, I actually went wrong with the brow. I should have done my under eye highlight wrong, but here we are. That's okay. All right, so here we go. You got your transition color. You've been following me for a long time. You know at least to bring it to the front. So here we have it, okay? And you put it down. More than likely, you're not blending this into the brow bone. This is kind of agonizing doing it wrong because I'm itching to fix it, but I can't because I'm here to demonstrate to you. Okay. Now you're going to take Woof Woof, which is the, the dark brown color. This eye is looking really good. Anyway, the dark brown color, right? And you're going to go into your transition. Let's say you're following along in this video and you're like, okay, let me do what she's doing. She put Woof Woof. Okay, boom. Go ahead and put Woof Woof. woof. Tap it off the excess and I mess up my face. And then she told me to come right here. Okay, so I came right here and then you stopped right here. Right? Remember, on this side, we brought it all the way in and we touched the front of the brow, which might be strange for you, but it makes a huge difference. But on this side, you're like, boom, boom, let me just put it right here. So you're probably Russian, okay? And that's the problem, okay? You're probably Russian and that's the problem. <laughs> that's issue number one, uno, bakun, okay? You did that, right? And then you're like, okay, so she told us to put the, the glitter color on the lid. First of all, do you see how this is unblended? And this is the thing, I can't help but do my best to make it look good. So you might see this and think, Oh, it looks good to me, but mm -mm, maybe mm -mm. with the compare and contrast, there's a huge difference. But for you, you might be thinking, if I could just figure out a way to, just to do that, I'd be good. I get it. I understand. But this is not, this is not, it's not what I want you to do. If you're going to do this, don't go say you watch my videos. Okay. If you do this, say you watch somebody else. <laughs> and then when it comes to the thing, okay, so with the lid color, you're like, okay. Then I told me to use my finger. I'm going to go ahead and use that cafecito again, get this little bronze situation going. And then for you, when you do it wrong, which I know a lot of people do, you just use your lid where that crease is. So you're like, okay, she told me to go ahead 
ahead and put this right here. Let me go ahead and do that. And I'm wiping it like she told me. And why doesn't my eyelid look like hers, right? you like, hold on, something going wrong here. You know, I'm doing what she said. I'm putting in the inside. I'm going to the outside. You don't even stop at the three quarters like I did. You bringing it all the way, baby. That's what you did. Oh, this is pretty, this is, <laughs> this is actually a throwback for me because I used to do that when I was first starting off. All wrong. You bringing the lid color all the way to the end, baby. That's what you doing. That's a problem. And look, look at all of the issues. <laughs> Comment below and let me know if you are seeing the problems. Do you see how when I use a natural crease on my eye, it makes my eye look so small compared to this side. Look at how much more open and awake I am on this side versus this side. Like, I just can't do it. This video was supposed to be informative, maybe a little bit comical. Do not be offended. This part is hideous. I know that you probably do your makeup like this. This is not horrific. It looks good. I used to do my face like that years ago, but it is not it now in 2021. Okay, so boom, there you go. You do that and then we are gonna get that. First of all, you are gonna skip the inner eye highlight because maybe you don't like it or you don't know about it. You, you know, you don't think you need it. I don't know. I do feel like a lot of people know at least about eyeliner. So you are gonna go ahead, you are gonna put your eyeliner on because I feel like for anybody, even if you don't do makeup, you are gonna put on eyeliner, okay? Comment and let me know if you're like, listen, no matter what, I'm putting on that eyeliner, okay? So there you go. And this is, this is Revlon Color Stay Crayon in the color black. All right, so there's that. And that does, that does make it look decent. You see what I'm saying? And then let's see, you gonna do your mascara. But see, here's the thing. I love this Lawless mascara because look at what it did to my eyes. I'm gonna use a different one. This is Milk Kush mascara. Let's see if this one is gonna be as fantastic. I don't know, because I've used this before and it did not give me the same volume. And then also what I feel like many people are doing is just putting mascara on the top and not the bottom. I know that you might have shorter lashes on the bottom and you feel like, oh, there's no point. But I'm telling you, maybe you just need to find a good mascara. Oh, one other thing too that I could point out with mascara is if you see, I'm going and I should have done it. I'm gonna just teach you that on this side, okay? I like to go under and while I'm going under, I'm wiggling left to right. And then I go on top and turn the wand. And then I'm doing like, you know, upward strokes and just doing that all around until I get my desired level of mascara application. Now, hold on a second. I haven't used the Kush mascara with this much intentionality until now. So hold on, let me find out Kush. Kush is giving Lawless a little something to play with. Or is it because I have more eyelashes on this side than this side? The jury's out. I don't know. Oh, I'm so annoyed. Oh, not me throwing things around. All right, let's take this Milk Kush mascara on the bottom, baby, and see what it does. Now you may be doing bottom mascara and top mascara, but one thing I can say is on the bottom lash, you may have noticed that I do normally take the colors from the top and bring them to the bottom. Now I love to do that because it really does round out the whole entire look. But for this eye, I wanted to keep it very beginner friendly. But if you see my videos, you know that I bring the crease colors down here, okay? All right, Kush is not giving me the same intensity on the bottom like Lawless, but Kush is giving Lawless on the top run for her money. And I'm shocked because when I apply Kush on the top, I don't apply it as much as I just did. So it's it's just different, strange, because I normally wear eyelashes. So the way my top lashes look don't matter to me. It's the bottom that I care about. It doesn't matter. You're not here for mascara. We are verging into a different discussion right now. But main event, the transition and the eyelid look terribly different. Not only that, you have the inner eye highlight, which to me wakes up the face. What do you think? Hello, I'm here at work on time. I took time to get ready. Whereas this side looks like I was putting this on in traffic on I-10. Also, when I stopped to get free Chick-fil-A breakfast, I applied this as I was waiting for my order, you know? I feel strange because my face is fully done, but it is not the way I like it. <laughs> when I look crazy. Now, I could and maybe I should just fix it. How about I do that? Let me go ahead and fix it. And then we gonna end the video. How about that? Because you can fix it, okay? Tacos and chill. Taking some of that to blend into brow bone highlight once again like we should and then 
the brown color woof woof we didn't go here right so let's take ooh, look a little dark okay we take that and do that and then when it comes to the eyelid we're gonna open that back up again with some of the product going slowly because i already have on mascara and my lashes are wicked long so we gotta figure this out so long. See how already the eye is opening up? Like, come on. It's a little better. It's not perfect. It's a little bit better, okay? And then I'm gonna take Woof Woof again, this dark brown. We had to get the corner to be dark. And then we brought, ooh, I just, I just tapped my brush into the wrong color. Okay, changing my brush now. Get the corner, make that dark. Okay. All right, it's not exact, but it looks better. Okay, so comment and let me know if this video was helpful. I wanna know which of these eye looks is normally your strategy. Did you learn anything new from this video? Are you gonna try anything differently based on what I just showed you? And yeah, make sure you are subscribed. Give the video a thumbs up. Let me know that you like this video. Let other people know you like the video by thumbsing it up. Comment below, make sure you are subscribed, like I said. And as always, glad you're here. Thanks for watching, girl. Bye.